Training a dog, especially a puppy like Marlo, when you have no yard or the weather is extreme can seem impossible. So in this video, I'm going to share my best tips on how to avoid the messiest mistakes in small spaces. Easily two of the hardest things to work on are going to be potty training and crate training, which we'll talk about crate tips in just a moment. But let's start with the messiest. So how in the world do you potty train a dog when you don't have a yard or space is really limited? The most effective way that I have found to potty train any age dog starting at eight weeks and up is to do my proactive potty training process, which has helped millions of pet parents where I take the dog to the designated potty area every, this is key, one to three hours based on the dog's age size and how far along they are. And if you want to potty train even faster, I do this during the night as well. And the reason this can potty train a puppy so fast in under one to two weeks is because it is taking away the opportunity for the puppy to practice the behavior of going potty indoors. The more disciplined you can be in the beginning with this, the faster your puppy will learn to go potty. But then you may say, well, Rachel, I don't have a yard. Where do I take them? There's a couple options. One, you can use potty pads in your apartment if you don't have a balcony or a patio or a yard at all. And I'll show how I potty pad train indoors in just a moment. But my preferred option is using a real grass patch. A fresh patch is my favorite brand. And this is where they send you a real grass pad based on your dog's size, which is hydroponically grown. There's no dirt and mud. So your dog can practice, especially if you have a patio balcony or like garage area. So your dog can practice going on grass. So when they are older and you take them on walks, they're used to that texture and that sensation under their feet. And it's not completely foreign. Before we jump into crate training, let's talk about how do we stop our dog or puppy from chewing all over the furniture, chewing on the baseboards, urinating all over the carpet and staining it. The quickest resolution to that, other than working with them, is to manage their environment, meaning using baby gates, play pens, door stoppers, to keep their area and their world small in the beginning as they're getting used to your home and as they are learning what is and what is not appropriate. A real concern is barking in the crate or howling when you're gone. And this is why I prioritize crate training and making the crate Disneyland right away. We are living in a rental right now with our foster puppy Marlo who was not crate trained at all. And these are the three things we did to get her comfortable with being in the crate quietly in under a week. Firstly, in the beginning, we had the crate in our bedroom next to us. So this way she didn't feel so abandoned, so alone, so secluded. Two, we fed all of her meals in or around the crate starting day one. If she got a high value treat or chew, she got it in the crate. And for half of the meals, we hand fed her in or around the crate. When she was really nervous about it, we did it right in front of the crate. As she got more comfortable, we did it in the crate, sat right outside. And a pro tip on this is if you get a nanny cam, I currently use the Furbo 360 that shoots out treats. When I'm gone, I actually will shoot her some treats when she's being calm inside the crate from the nanny cam to reinforce that calm behavior. Before we go on to the next one, I just got a new package in from the farmer's dog and I wanna show you a quick game and activity I do with Marlo here on impulse control. As you can see, she wants to grab the food out of my hands because she loves it so much. And what I love to do with Marlo is to hand feed her and she only yes and she only gets her food you can see it here when she's in a calming position whether that's a sit or a down because remember mental stimulation and enrichment is twice as tiring as physical exercise alone down yes go girl look at that now one thing it might be kind of hard to see is if you have a dog or puppy that's biting or they take treats really difficult what I do when I'm hand feeding her is I hold the food like this and I only release it when she's only using her tongue. This teaches her to be gentle and that if she tries to bite the food out and be rough with it, she's not gonna get the reward. So this is a great way to do that. Now, one reason I'm feeding farmer's dog with her, if you'll remember, when we first started fostering her, she wouldn't eat anything. We tried raw, we tried freeze dried, she wouldn't eat it. Uh, farmer's dog, fortunately, we had some in the freezer and we tried it with her after defrosting and she 
just gobbled it down just like you can see here. This was the food that helped bring her back to life. And that was when I bought the farmer's dog with my own money. They weren't sponsoring that. So it's pretty cool today that they're now sponsoring part of this video and just being a big supporter of our mission to help these rescue dogs. Now the primary reason I love this food is this is a form of fresh food. What does that mean? Well, any traditional kibble out there is highly processed, ultra processed, extruded and cooked at extremely high temperatures. That makes it shelf stable, which is convenient to feed, but what does that do? That removes most of the moisture and dogs are meant to get their moisture that they need to survive and thrive from their food. So I love the fact that this is a moisture rich, fresh food. This is 100% human grade, gently cooked. I love the fact that they are high in protein and they have a variety of flavors. Now, pro tip, if you wanna try Farmer's Dog, there is a special code for you in the description below. Now let's go on to, let's talk about scary noises. One of the hardest things about living in a smaller space or even a neighborhood, maybe an apartment complex, is there's often a lot of noises which can make our dogs nervous, bark, howl, when we're home or when we're not. So one of the things I love to do is to spend time proactively listening for these noises. And then anytime she stays focused on me and not the noise out there, just like this, I reward. Remember, mental stimulation can be twice as tiring and satisfying and relaxing to a dog than just physical exercise alone. But what I love to do is spend five minutes at a time, about three times a day, kind of sitting by the front door, sitting by the window, opening up the window so that my dog can hear people walking by, cars driving by, and when she's focused on me, yes, I reward, simple as that. And on this note, I love to practice during this, the look at me or focus cue. And this is where we'll sit, I've got some treats in my hand, and I'll, yes. And what I'm doing is I'm waiting for her to give me eye contact and I'm rewarding that. And of course people ask, well, what about exercise? I have a big dog, I have a small space, no yard. How do I give them proper exercise? So like I said before, mental stimulation, like enrichment or brain games, and I'll talk about a few examples of that in a moment, can be twice as tiring as physical exercise alone. Does that mean your dog should not have physical exercise? Mm, absolutely not. The minimum amount of physical exercise I like to give my dogs whenever possible is 15 to 20 minutes of heart pumping activity, meaning their heart rate's up a little bit. So this could be a brisk walk or a longer leisurely walk or doing some work on recall going back and forth. And a good example of that is you can do this indoors, even in a small space. Marlo, touch. Yes, good girl. Or chasing back and forth, yeah, and getting a little bit of exercise. And while this might seem a little crazy, you know what I'm teaching her right now? Yes, good girl. Right now, she's learning that when I'm running away from her, yes, and she comes to me without me calling her, without me asking for her, good things happen. Free. Yes, good girl. And just like that, I gave her a weight cue and then had her kind of run to me. I did a short distance so you could actually see what I was doing. But you do that five times back and forth. It can be a great way to get some physical exercise. What about puppy push-ups? Down. Yes. Sit. Yes. There we go. She just did a puppy push-up. Oh, by the way, if you found value in this, don't forget to click that subscribe button. You can also find daily videos and daily tips on my TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, at Rachel Fasaro. yeah. Now, if you want to learn more about enrichment activities to mentally tire your dog, click the video right here. We'll jump over there together. Or if you want to learn about my favorite foods for dogs, click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.